So then, like I said before, in order to take advantage of tree shaking in Firebase 9 to remove any unused code, we need to use a module bundler like Webpack, because it's the module bundler that bundles our different pieces of imported source code together into a final JavaScript bundle file. And it's that JavaScript bundle that we'd link to from our HTML page. Now, if you're creating your website with a CLI tool like Create React App or the Vue CLI or something like that, then most of the time Webpack or another module bundler is automatically set up for you. So in those cases, you won't need to manually set it up yourself and you can go right ahead and just start using Firebase 9 from the get go. However, if you're not using a CLI tool to build your site and you're just making a regular site using HTML and vanilla JavaScript, then you'll need to set up a module bundler yourself. Now, I don't want to assume that you're using a CLI tool like the Vue CLI or Create React App to build your website. So I'll be showing you how to set up Webpack to bundle our code in this lesson. And then in the next lesson, we'll start to use Firebase 9. So if you want to skip this lesson, if you already know how to do this, then be my guest. So I've already got open a project folder in VS Code, which has nothing in it at all to begin with. The first thing I'm going to do is create a source folder, which is where all of our source JavaScript code is going to live. And inside that, I'm going to make a new index.js file, which will be our JavaScript entry file. So this is the file that we'll be writing all of our JavaScript code in later on. The next thing I'll do is create a dist folder. Now, this is where our final bundled JavaScript code is going to live, and we'll specify that to Webpack shortly. Also inside this folder, I'm going to create an index.html file. This will be the web page that we serve to the browser, and we'll hook that up later to our bundled JavaScript file. So we don't link to the source JavaScript file from here, but to a bundled one when we have it. Now inside the HTML file, I'm just going to boilerplate a page by typing doc and then hitting tab. Then I'm just going to update the title to say Firebase 9. And also I'm going to add an H1 in the body. And that's going to say something like getting started with Firebase 9. The next thing we need to do is install Webpack and configure it. To do this, we'll be using NPM, the Node Package Manager, so it's important at this point to make sure you have Node.js installed on your computer. If you don't, then you can download it and install it at nodejs.org. Once you've done that, you can open up a terminal and we're going to type npm init and then hyphen y. This is going to create a new package.json file to keep track of all of our different dependencies that we need to install. And one of those is going to be Webpack. So let's do that. So we need to install Webpack, but also the Webpack CLI. So type now npm i for install, then Webpack and then webpack hyphen CLI. And then at the end, do hyphen D, capital D, to save this to our dev dependencies. So we're installing two packages here, right? Webpack itself, and also the webpack CLI, which is gonna be used to run webpack. So now that's done, we can go ahead and make a new webpack config file inside the root of our project directory. So not inside the source folder or the dist folder, but in the root project folder. Now inside this file is where we configure what we want Webpack to do. What we want it to do is look at our source index.js file and any imports that we have in there later as well, and then bundle all of that code together into a single bundle file. So to do this, we need to export an object which represents our Webpack configuration. Now, I don't want to waste your time by typing all of this configuration out from scratch. So what I'm now going to do is just copy this from the course files and paste it in, and then I'll explain it line by line. So then first off, we have this module.exports and we export an object from this file. And inside this object, there's different properties which represent the configuration of Webpack for us. So first we specify a mode. Now that can be production for production, but we're just developing. So I've specified development. Then we have an entry property. And this is the entry file that we need to specify a path to it. And that says where we want Webpack to initially look for our JavaScript source file. So we say inside the source folder, then index.js. Now we have an output property, and this is an object. Now the first property of that object is a path. So it's a path to whatever folder or directory we want the output file to be put into. Now we want it to be inside the dist folder. 
Now, in order to create this path, we need to use the path module right here. So we require that, that is a core node module. And then we use that, add a method called resolve on that path object to resolve a new path. This underscore underscore dir name basically just gets the current directory of this file. And then we say go into the dist folder from here. And this is required because we need an absolute path right here, not a relative one, unlike this. All right, so after we have the path, we also specify a file name for the output file, which I've called bundle.js. And then finally, after the output property, we have a watch property, which I set to be true. And this is so that when we run Webpack, it's going to watch our file over here. And every time we make a change, it's going to bundle up the new code into the bundle.js file. So then we will run Webpack and it will take the source file and any imports inside this file as well. It will bring those in as well and bundle them all together and spit it out inside the dist folder into a file called bundle.js. And like I said, every time we make a change to that file and hit save because we're watching it, it's going to re-bundle that up. All right, so now we have that Webpack config file set up. Next, we want to run Webpack to do all of this bundling. So to do this, we'll make a custom script in our package.json file. I'm going to call it build, but you can call it something else if you wish. And then for that, we just set it to be Webpack. So now when we run this script, it will run the Webpack command and that will automatically look for our Webpack config file and run Webpack according to our configuration. So just before we do that, let's add some code into the source index.js file. I'm just going to add in a simple console log and then I'm going to save it. But later on, we'll be using file imports in here to import functions from the Firebase library. And that's where the power of module bundle is coming to play. For now, I just want to see if this process is all going to work. So now we'll open up a terminal and I'm going to run our new script by typing npm run and then the name of the script, which is build. And when I do that, Webpack will take our source code and it's going to bundle it into the output file inside the dist folder. And we can see it right there. And it's also going to be watching our index.js file for changes so that it rebundles every time we make a change and then save the file. Now, remember, we also need to link to this JavaScript file, the new bundle from the HTML page. So let's also do that now. So right at the bottom of this page, I'm just going to add a script tag and set the source to be bundle.js. So now if we preview this in a browser, it should show the message in the console, right? Now, to preview the site, you can use any local development server. I'm just using a package called Live Server, which you can install by going to your packages and then searching for Live Server. And it's this package that you want right here. And with that installed, I can just right click on any HTML file and select Open with Live Server. And now in the browser, if I open up the dev tools, then we can see over in the console, hello from index.js. So Webpack has bundled up our code from that source file. It's output it into the bundle file, which we've linked to from our HTML page, which is why we can see it inside the console. So that is Webpack set up. Next up, we're going to start working with Firebase.